All right, guys, we're gonna be dropping some awesome knowledge on you. We're gonna be doing an unboxing, showing, showcasing this whole PC from front to back, in and out. We are gonna do some reviews, some benchmarks, some gaming, and we're gonna show the BIOS, we're gonna talk about bloatware, and also down the road, we will be doing some upgrades with this awesome PC. This is an ASUS Ryzen 7 5800X with a base clock of 3.8 and a boost of 4.7. It's an eight core 16 thread monster, 36 megabytes cast, seven nanometer design, and it does support DDR4, 3200 megahertz ram and there's 2x 8 gigabyte sticks of total of 16 it maxes out at 64 gigabytes and we have an rtx 3060 single fan edition in here with uh it's gdr6 and there's 12 gigabytes of gdr6 that's a pcie 4.0 card we also have some nice storage on here we got a one terabyte 7200 rpm disc and a 512 megabyte m.2 nvme pcie 3.0. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop smabbling and babbling and I'm going to break this thing open. All right, guys, let's get this PC out of its box. You know, I'm, I've been kind of uh, interested in the ASUS PCs and the first one I reviewed, I, I wasn't too happy with it. It wasn't a bad offering, but I don't know how it's going to do in with these little bit higher end parts, if it's going to be a heater box, you know, where it's going to end up on this review scale. They do have a good packaging amount of foam and it's good decent high density foam so you don't gotta worry about your PC ending up in 100 pieces when you receive it. I'm gonna be flipping it on, on its top because our table isn't tall enough here. So some stuff might be coming spilling out. We should have a plexiglass thing that's in here. All right guys, so as you can see, we have a keyboard and mouse that's pretty much useless right here. Um, I will show it to you. You could use this keyboard if you uh, unbox it, and that's all you have, but go and get yourself some you know, cheap gaming peripherals. You can go on Amazon for like under 30 bucks and get some decent ones. This is not a good keyboard to be using for gaming. And the big thing, if you play FPSs or even MOBAs, a DPI adjustable mouse. That's gonna be important. But if we come into this box, Asus does do better than other pre-built makers. They uh, offer you a cheap mouse. It's not the worst in the world, it's not the best in the world. Power cable, which you're gonna to need to plug your PC in. The screws for your side panel, uh, plexiglass side panel. A quick start guide of where to plug everything in. If you're wondering, hey, hi, hey, Technitwit, how do I plug everything in? Well, that's a little guide. I'll show it to you guys really quick. There is a stop and attention thing that says, hey, if you know this PC's broken or something's wrong, don't return it to the store. Uh, one thing you do want to check if your PC doesn't boot or you have some issues, and I'll show you once we get into this case, is you're going to want to check all the power connections, you're going to want to check all the data connections, like the front panel connector and all that bad mamma jamma. Jamma. So let's get this foam out of our way, and let's get our glass plexi side panel out of our way. This will be installed, and I will show you how to install it. And then our PC, so this should be... There we go flip it back around let's see let's get the skirt off and see what's under the hood so you got to actually have it on it's, it's actually on the bottom with this tape and now you should be able to unveil her there we go so we do got some awesome stickiness protection on the top of the case they're trying to keep it from being scratched show you guys some awesomeness so first off let's go tear some sticky goodness off and this stuff is like super 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 sticky tape all right guys so we're going to come to the front right here and here's our power button we have a headphones microphones combo jack and then we have two 3.2 gen 1 usb type a you know just the standard ports coming around to the side this side panel does come off and let's go to the rear quick and I'll show you all the ports on the rear. So from the top we have two USB Gen 2 type A's and then we got a PS2 keyboard and mouse old style connection. We got two graphic, sorry, three graphical ports that can be used with the onboard graphics. Don't use these, you're going to have a terrible time. Uh, but this is a, a VGA, a DVI and an HDMI. And then we have two more USB ports and then two more right here. So these four are Gen 2s, and then these these uh, light blue are actually 3.2 Gen 2. So a little bit faster of a port. This should be a 10 gigabyte, this should be a five gigabit port. 
You got a 10 1000 Ethernet NIC, and then you have a headphones, or you got a microphones, a headphones, and an auxiliary slash line input port. We have our 92 millimeter fan, which is kind of odd, but sure, you know, Asus, do your thing. Um, we have our RTX 3060, which supports four monitors in total, one HDMI monitor and three display monitors. We have our 550 bronze 80 plus power supply, which has an on off switch right here, if you're wondering what that is. And then of course, come to this side, we do, if you keep stick with this panel, it does have some air ventilation in the side. And then on the bottom, we do have some air ventilation for the, the PSU. All right, guys, I'm gonna bust this side panel off and let's see what's under the hood. Get my trusty dusty iFixit kit out and let's take these two screws off. I'm actually gonna take all four out right away because since I'm back here, because I wanna show you the wire management and all the other goodness that's on this other side. I do like that they put Loctite on these screws so they don't come out during shipping, but it also makes it kind of hard to initially get the screws out. All right, take our first side panel off and these come off kind of weirdly. I'll show you what this, uh, not the back panel, but the front panel. So you pull to the rear, grab this little handle, pull to the rear, you stop, you let it kind of come out on an angle and you pull straight up. There's three tabs here that grab on into here. So if you look, these three tabs research down into here like this and then you pull forward and then gotta kind of latch it in there and pull push push towards the front and then it's back on there of course your ooh, that's a different heat sink that i'm not used to seeing in the asus's uh good job asus for putting a a six heat pipe design oh no it's no well, it's six heat pipes but they're crimped right here and they they start right here all right, guys, let's go over the components inside our ASUS 10DK. So right out of the back, you see these two light gray slots are, are filled. That's if you have an ASUS that only has a single stick like this, you want to make sure they're in the gray slots, and then you fill the black slots second. Um, we have our standard 24-pin uh, PSU connector. This is a USB 3.2 uh, header connector. We do have dual 8 pins that are kind of taut right here. Uh, it's not the best. We do have a graphics card support bracket, which with this little card is kind of silly and simple. We do see our 512 gigabyte NVMe PCIe 3.0 card, and our VRM does look like it's got some cooling. Eight pin PCIe auxiliary plug. And then of course, uh, let's start off by just unplugging our GPU, and let's see if we can remove it so we can see deeper in this PC. So unlike the other PC that we had, uh, the very cheap one, the bracket was like way the heck up here and you see they actually have holes for a couple different GPU sizes. If they can get the screw out, there we go. And it, our door opens and we gotta take two more screws out for our GPU. You guys can kind of see that. All right, so we're gonna reach down here and we got this little latch down here. Gonna push that all the way down. And then we actually got this kind of bracket that sits up top here. It's going to make it easy to pull this guy out. And there's our 3060 Ti, uh, single fan edition, kind of a neat looking card. Back plate's kind of neat looking as well. I wonder why they did that with the bent back plate like that, if that was some type of design for another type of PC that they're uh, doing. All right, guys, a couple things I wanted to show. We have one, two, three, four SATA ports. One is hooked up to our 7200 RPM spinny disk disk. We do have a daughter card. It's an M.2 uh, stand-in card. Looks like it gives some USB capabilities with our Wi-Fi card that's in here. And then we do have, this is a B550 motherboard. And other than that, you do see our front panel connectors and our USB connectors down at the bottom right here. And of course, we are gonna swing around to the other side to show you some more goodies that are inside this ASUS. ASUS does a nice job with wire management. And if I pull these wires out of here, there's another seven plugs for SATAs. But I will have to warn you, big mixed reviews about this power supply. Uh, out of about a, maybe like 60 reviews, there's probably about seven people that are having problems with this power supply. So if you're having issues and everything's plugged in, this might be somewhere to look to upgrade or swap it out. Or if you're having issues and you don't feel that you have the skill to do it, 
of course send it back if that is something you want me to do in the upgrade video maybe i'll swap in one of the other power supplies to show you how to do that just so if you have that problem we can uh, get that resolved um, back here there's nothing too interesting other than to take the front panel off you do have to take these three clips off there are some plastic dowels that are inside here and then this whole front panel comes off and there's some rgb goodness stuff in the front here the only ventilation that is in the front is right in this bottom right in here it's like aces you could have designed a way better front panel to your case it's i feel like you got like halfway done to end you know engineering is like yeah you got two months to get this done and they got like two weeks and they're like yeah we don't need ventilation in the front because you look in this front right here and i'll show you guys at the gopro down in this area it looks like they have a slot and they even have a cutout for another fan but they never actually put it there because you have like no way to suck the air in and it does look like they were thinking about maybe having some like a 240 millimeter uh, AIO compatibility or even a 120 in the front but it looks like they abandoned that so I don't know what exactly ASUS was trying to do or if there's a different model that this this uh, metal case fits around and it has a different front because if there is it'd be worth just trying to order that different front that has better airflow because that would solve a lot of the issues that this PC sees um, on the cheaper variant of this PC with gaming and benchmarks, I've seen about an average of 70 to 75 C between the GPU and CPU averaging, you know, temperature while gaming. Other than that, guys, we'll do some BIOS and bloatware stuff, gaming and benchmark stuff, and then we'll have the conclusion. All right, guys, so we start off with the gaming benchmarks with 3D Mark, and it doesn't get that warm, but it's going to start warming up here quick. Next is up the Speed Racer, and we only stay in the 70s, but Fire Strike, this is about 20, 25 minutes in. We are hitting 80 Celsius, 84 Celsius, almost 90 Celsius at the end of Fire Strike. It's going to start to thermal throttle. Really is the wrong solution is that plexiglass side. You need to keep that aerated side on. It's no question about it. Just throw that piece of plexiglass in the garbage if this is going to be the piece you're going to run. 86 Celsius in Cyberpunk, and now we're into Forza. And we topped out about 80. It only did about halfway through the benchmark. GTA 5, we're looking at um, 70. Red Dead Redemption, we're looking at 83, 85 Celsius. Our GPU is sitting at 80 Celsius because it's starting to radiate heat back and forth, and they're sucking in heat from each other. And uh, GPU is almost 80 there. And of course, last but not least, Tomb Raider, and we're in the 80s again. Yeah, that's just not going to cut it. You're going to have to do a cooling upgrade because otherwise this thing's not going to run very well while gaming. So you're going to want to hit the delete key or F2 while the computer's booting. And first off, this will get us into the main screen. And then we're going to go into AI Tweaker. And then we're going to go to AI Overclocker. You can either set it to auto or manual. I leave it on auto. And this is where you could set your memory's frequency. Uh, CPU core ratio, TPU, and a bunch of other overclocking settings we're not going to get into right now. And of course, that's an OC tune that'll do it for you automatically. And this is if you want to set the cast latencies in, on your memory. And now we're going to go up to the advanced tab. And in the advanced, you have a bunch of stuff. You have CPU stuff, you got SATA stuff, you got power management stuff, which is APM. Uh, you have PCIe link stuff, you got USB stuff in here, you got NVMe configuration, you got a whole bunch of stuff you can change in advance that will, I'm um, not going to go over all of it, but you know, here's a bunch of your power settings. Right here, we're going to click on PCIe subsystems and we're going to enable the above 4G decoding, which is going to allow us to enable resize bar, which is a great thing to have especially for performance and stuff like that. I also enable SRIOV. You don't have to, but you know, here it's there. Now we're going to go into the USB configuration and that's going to allow you to, you know, enable disable USB ports, look at your mass storage devices and all sorts of wonderful jazz like that. To right here is more overclocking settings. That's why it asks you, you know, it comes with a prompt and there's a bunch of stuff in here that you can do uh, along with um, so now we're going to jump over to monitoring. Here we can see our CPU, our temperature of our motherboard. We can, uh, and up top I just clicked on the fan control settings and this will allow you to uh, set your different fan curves and what you would like them at and uh, how you want it to operate and whatnot. I always leave it on turbo. Seems to do the best job and you can click both of these and set it to turbo. 
And then once you do that, you can also hit the optimize all and it'll optimize all these. Now we're gonna go into the Q fan control. This is gonna give you even more fan controls on your computer. You can really fine tune it if you want. Now we're going into the boot configuration stuff. This is gonna enable like fast boot. Uh, this is compatibility or CSM compatibility stuff. That's gonna allow you to disable and enable compatibility stuff. I usually leave it stock unless there's some reason you need to enable this, leave it alone. Uh, secure boot, which will usually be on if you're running Windows, and this is the key management, and you can select other OSs if you're going to run something other than Windows on this uh, PC. Uh, last but not least is tools, and there's the Easy Flashy 3 utility to update the BIOS, and uh, we're not going to do it, but it'll see all your drives and stuff, and then ASUS Secure Erase, which will allow you to do SSDs and your NVMEs, it'll allow you to erase them right here, and then uh, this is memory info, it'll let you look at the different DIMMs in the slots, and see the actual information that's being sent to the motherboard. And uh, it'll tell you what your cast latencies are. And of course, uh, we're gonna eventually here hit the exit and you're gonna always wanna save your changes. You don't wanna do anything else. And if you have problems and for some reason you're not booting, you can do load optimize default right here and then hit save and reset. And that'll allow you to boot the system if you can configure something in here that screws it up and doesn't allow it to boot. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to get in the bloatware. Uh, to be quite honest, there really isn't any bloatware other than the stuff that Windows puts on here. Um, you can hit add, remove programs, and I'll run you through all this stuff because there's really nothing in here. I'm not going to waste your time. Um, you can, If you want a video on how to remove the Windows bloatware, that's probably another subject for another time, and let's get moving on. Hey, witty hands, we're coming to the conclusion of this Asus G10DK and there are some positives and there are some negatives. I really am torn about this PC. I mean, it's a heater of a box. The thing just does not cool well, but it does have good parts. It has XMP support, it has overclocking ability, but what's all that ability if you can't use it? I mean, really, let's ask the question there. Could you modify the case and do some work into it to probably make it get to make it have better airflow? Sure, but are you really gonna waste your time in an uphill battle on a crappy case when you could go and spend under a hundred bucks, get a better case, swap all the parts, and you'll be off to the races? Really, that's the question. There is gonna be some more upgrading with this PC on TechNet. We are gonna do a GPU, we're gonna do an AIO, and we are gonna do RAM. I will do a case swap if we get enough likes from you, the subscribers and, and fans. But other than that, if you if we don't get enough likes, I'm just gonna throw this PC to the wayside and move on to the next thing. Anyways, guys, I'm Tech Nitwit. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm out, y'all.